All right, guys, I'm on to my uh, second task here. Uh, if you caught the last video, I was removing all the brackets off a of rear end uh, with a plasma cutter. And then I ended up using my grinder with a grinding stone on it and started removing remnants of the welds and stuff from the old brackets that was on there, trying to clean it up a little bit. I worked on it for about 15 or 20 minutes, and uh, it's very slow, crappy work, grinding stuff off, smooth. But anyway, the grinder got really hot, and I don't want to burn it up, so I just kind of shut it off, set it to the side in the shade, and I'm going to let it cool off. Probably going to have to let it set about an hour to cool off. So in the meantime, I've decided I'm going to come out here and see if it's possible to get this engine out of this Monte Carlo. So I know some of you guys have followed my channel long enough know uh, the details about this, uh, but some of you that are new to the channel or stumbled across this video, maybe you don't know. So... Uh, I am a Tri-5 Chevy guy and I am a G-Body guy. Those are my two favorite vehicles in the world. Uh, I have had a ton of G-Bodies through the years. I have built a lot of G-Bodies and I've had some fast G-Bodies. But uh, anyway, this was bought as a parts car. This is a 1988 SS Monte Carlo uh, T-top car. Lots of options, highly optioned car, but it is totaled. The frame horn's bent really, really bad on it. It went all down the side. The quarter panel's wasted. The door's wasted. This car is super rusty. Uh, the T-roof itself is very rusty, which is common on a G-body T-top car. This is always rusty. When you pull all that trim off, you'd be surprised at what you find when you pull that stuff off. But anyway, you can stick your finger in there. You can stick your finger up in there. There was, in the center piece down through there, it had rust holes in it. Uh, I actually did cut a piece out right there to patch into another T-top car I had, but anyway, this is a parts car, and that's pretty much all it will ever be. Um, it does make me sick to do that. The the sickest part of the whole deal, this is an 89,000 original mile car. I mean, to me, that's a low mileage car, especially for an 88 car, 1988 car, but, you know, it, at least it's getting some... Uh, the engine will go on to live another day, we'll say, but uh, I cut this quarter panel off or drilled the spot welds and removed it and put the whole quarter panel on another Monte Carlo SS. Um, there's lots of parts and pieces I've picked off of this car. This, uh, this car, when I bought it, the guy actually had already sold the console and bucket seats out of it to somebody else, but the original steering wheel, the uh, shifter handle, uh, the, you know, the little T-handle, uh, all, and the, even the brake pedal pad on the brake arm, uh, all that stuff still looked nice, like the grain was still on the steering wheel. That's usually how you can tell a you know, 100,000 plus mile G body is by the steering wheel and the gear shift handle itself. It's grained like a plasticky rubber vinyl stuff. And uh, you know when that stuff's wore down, it's got some miles on it. All that stuff still looked nice. It still had grain on it. So uh, that those parts ended up going in with the lot with the, the good car that was being built. Uh, I actually had at one time five Monte Carlo SS's here and uh, I ended up selling all five of them to one guy as a, a group and four of them are still here. He took the one that I did a lot of work on. I've done a lot of work and as far as I know it's in a body shop but I don't know the progress of it. That was quite a few years back. But, it's time for this one to leave. This one's back in the backyard. Anyway, uh, the only thing keeping me from letting him come and get it, he actually offered to come and get it there like a month ago, but I, I needed to pull the engine and we were having so much rain that I couldn't get back here to get it out. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that and then I'll call him see if he wants to come pick it up. Anyway, it is a shame and I do hate doing it, but the car, the frame's bent, it's rusted out, and it's been used for parts, so I, I am not building it, and I don't know anybody else that would, so. Anyway, I used the cylinder heads off this engine on a 350. Uh, this had the original HO305 heads on it, and I used them on a 350 to get the compression up on a dish piston 350, but uh, I ended up with another set of 305 58cc cylinder heads that I'm going to do a, a rebuild job on to put on here, but... This engine did run good. It didn't smoke or anything, but, uh, you know, I'm sure all the time and chains probably got some slack in it because it's probably old nylon gears anyway. But anyway, I plan on taking the engine out and I'm going to take it all apart, take the crank out of it, the pistons and everything out. I'm going to soak the pistons and degreaser with the rings on them, try to get all that old crap cleaned off of them. Uh, I'll probably use just a Scotch-Brite by hand and go in and kind of clean up the cylinder walls just a little bit. 
because I'm not re-ringing it or nothing. I'm just putting it back, back together. But uh, anyway, the the crank, I'm going to leave the bearings in the block, the halves that are in the block, uh, and the one, other ones that are in the rod, or the main caps, I will leave in there. Same with the rods. I'm just going to reuse all the bearings in the same exact spot they come out. Um, the lifters, I actually have a piece of wood in the in the garage that I've used a paddle bit on, and I've went about halfway on the board and I have it labeled front to rear, left to right. So when I pull all the lifters out, they will go in that exact order that they came out of this engine because I'm not putting a camo lifter kit in it either. Of course, I haven't checked the lifters yet. It may have a flat lifter, you know, dish lifter and a flat lobe. I don't know yet. I won't know until I get the engine apart and inspect it, but I'm kind of hoping that I don't have to put a camo lifter kit in it. I'm definitely changing the timing chain, but that's about it. But the engine will get fully, com you know, cleaned up and I'll pull the galley plugs out of the back of the block and run my brushes in there and clean it up real good. Take the block to the car wash and clean it real good. And then bring it back home and air, air blow it out every, everywhere and uh, pretty much put it all back together and then paint it. I'm probably going to paint it Chevy orange, put it in the 55. But just going to use Duplicolor engine enamel, aerosol, and spray it and be done with it. But it's going to have a new rear main seal, all new gaskets and everything in the whole engine. But if I had the extra money, I would put new rings and bearings in it because it's going to be a part, but I don't, so I'm not going to. It, it, it's a, it's one of them deals where everybody's like, well, you should do this. Well, I, I would if I could, but it's all about money, man. It, when you're on a budget, you're on a budget. That's all you can do. There's nothing wrong with the rings and bearings in this engine, so I'm just going to reuse them. But anyway, so only thing left is the transmissions out of this car the only thing left is the motor mount bolts whatever's connected to the fuel pump and the wiring harness going to the starter i think that's all that's left of this um, i don't want to cut these wires uh, he may need this engine harness for the other monte carlo but uh, all the wires are still nice and soft and pliable or not hard so i'm going to pull all the wires off so he can use the harness if he needs to but you know, I need to pull the fuel lines off the fuel pump and, and then pull them long motor mount bolts out. The only thing holding that engine in place in in the upright position is those long ass bolts and then big clamshell motor mounts. But anyway, I'll have to hook the chain up to the top of the block and bolt it on there to and get the engine hoist out here and get it kind of supported before I can even get the bolts out because I'm sure it's bound up in there. But anyway, there's still lots of good usable parts on this car, but. I'm sure he'll end up using quite a few of them. Anyway, guys, that's the plan. Go ahead and uh, see how far I can get on that today. I'm gonna, you know, I'll work on this for a little bit, and then I'll walk back around there, grind a little bit more, and then I'll come back around here and do this some more. So I'll just kind of stay busy, but it's the only way I can ever get anything done. So anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> I need to use that as a dipstick for the engine oil.
everywhere. You guys have no idea what awesome is until your sweat pores are open and your body is sweating and then you spray on uh, you know mosquito repellent kind of burns a little bit Now I'm taking all the wiring off the starter. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the, <clears throat> the guy that I sold these Monte Carlos to, originally, <clears throat> I didn't get the engine with his car, but uh, 
I hit him up about them. It's been a couple months ago, and he told me that I could just have that 305 because he don't like 305s, which many people don't. But you know, my square body, it's got a 305 in it. It takes me from point A to point B, so <laughs> it doesn't bother me none. But anyway, so it's pretty cool to get a you know a free engine out of the deal. But I am going to have to go through a lot of labor, uh, you know, cleaning it up, resealing it, painting it, all that crap, but. Uh, still at the end of the day, it's pretty much a free engine. So. Can't be free, man. Fog pump's not even locked up. Imagine that.
surprise, the water mount bolts are coming out. 13 minutes. Actually, forgot. I have a jack under the engine at the back holding it up, so. I wonder where that jack went. I love how I forget the name. Time to get an engine hoist a chain and some bolts. Have a little fun, I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the video there, guys. Thanks for watching. Well, let's see how this turns out. Can't be good. so it didn't break it. You might need it at other body parts.
think it engine's good. The block, anyway. I was worried about it having a crack in it. I think it's pretty good. Usually when a small block Chevy cracks from freezing and breaking, it's usually in this area is where I've seen it the most, but uh, I don't see anything on it. That's a good thing. I pulled the uh, oil pressure sender out so it didn't break it off because it's sticking all out there. I was afraid it'd get caught on the brake booster or something and snap it off in the block. So I went ahead and removed it. Yeah, I think it's will end up being a a good little engine. It's just gonna take a lot of cleanup, you know, a lot of work. But I gotta say, the uh, cylinder walls, there's no ridge. Like I don't feel anything, so it's kind of cool. You can kind of see a, a dark spot there, but I don't really feel anything. But oh boy, does that engine need a clean up, golly. So this is not a roller engine. It does have the stuff for the tray and you know all that, but it, what this is not, it doesn't have the roller stuff in it from the factory, so. That's all right, I guess. If it would have been a roller to save me some uh, money on oil, I wouldn't have had to buy all that oil with zinc in it, you know, to run with them hydraulic flat tappets. But anyway, I still get to, so whatever. Well, that's it, guys. I got it out of there. <laughs> I'm glad I removed that fan shroud for him because uh, it probably would have busted it to pieces. But anyway, now. I guess I'll text him to see if he wants to come get that this weekend. Or get this. There is tons of good usable parts on this. Still, you know. But it doesn't need to be here anymore. At least, uh, you know, I'm kind of tired of mowing around it, which you can see uh, I don't like to weed eat anyway, but... <laughs> that worked. You can see the, the grooves in the dirt from the wheels. I mean, they sunk. I didn't know if that was going to work or not. I figured it'd fall over, which I really didn't care if it fell over. I don't think it'd hurt anything. It might have bent my flex plate, but I got it out of there. Now I'm kind of wondering. I might be able to back the truck up right here with the tailgate down and set this down on the tailgate. I don't know if I can grab a hold of that and twist it around here or not. I might be able to. I'd like to go ahead and put that in the back of the truck and then drive it around to the front. But, engine's out. And I am dirty. I'm telling you, man, that uh, mosquito spray, uh, when you're out here in 90 degree heat and you're sweat, sweating real bad and your sweat pores are open and you spray that stuff on, holy crap, I'm still on fire. Like every little crevice in my body's on fire from that stuff, getting in my sweat pores, I guess. But anyway, so the engine is now out. Interesting. Thanks for watching, guys.